I'm Jonathan Wilson, the founder of OpSafe International. And today I'd like to talk about how to keep yourself and your team safe when you're responding to a disaster. And I can't stress to you enough how important this topic is. If you were a doctor and you were responding in an emergency situation where people were being brought into the hospital, would you go into the operating room without washing your hands? Would you go into the operating room without wearing surgical gloves, without putting on your mask? Now, we're probably not doctors, but we've all watched enough television to know that the doctor wears the gloves and the mask and washes his hands to prevent the spread of bacteria, things that we cannot see and yet can cause terrible damage. In the same way, stress is something that we cannot see. We don't realize that we're picking it up. And yet, it has the same potential to cause harm. And so, when we respond to people who've gone through deep stress, it's important that we also take care of ourselves. That we don't pick up that stress and let it internalize within us. And so we need to get into a routine. Just as the doctors and the nurses wash their hands and put on their gloves and put on their masks, we also, as psychological first aid volunteers, need to make sure that we're protecting ourselves as well as the children. So how do we do this? Can we wear a mask? Can we wash our hands? Well, no, <laughs> unfortunately, we cannot protect ourselves completely from stress. In fact, if we are helping children, if we're coming alongside children who have been in stressful incidents, we are exposing ourselves to a smaller measure of that same stress. Now this is called secondary post-traumatic stress. Imagine, if you will, that a small layer of stress is building up on you with each person that you try to help. Now, uh, this example is not going to be very good in the Philippines, but back in my country where I live, in Japan, we get snow. And so one day, it snowed quite heavily. And outside of my house, we have a carport. And the roof of the carport was covered with snow. And so I knew I need to get up there and take the snow off the carport. Otherwise, it's going to be too heavy and the carport will break. So I got up and I shoveled the snow off the carport and I got half of the carport done and then I realized that to get the other half done I would have to empty the snow into my neighbor's yard. My neighbor wasn't home and I needed to ask his permission and uh, so I, I was busy, I went to work and I left half of the carport with snow. A couple days went by and I was busy, I didn't get it done, I didn't get it done, and then another storm came and it dumped more snow on the roof. And guess what happened? The first snow didn't break the carport, but the second snow made another layer on top of the layer that was already there. And that layer broke the carport. In the same way, stress builds up. 
And so as we are ministering and we're helping the children and we hear a story or we find out about something that's happening in their life, a small layer of stress comes on us. And we have to sweep that layer off before we go in and add another layer onto it. And so as we're in the middle of a camp, if we hear a story that is distressing, if a child reveals something to us, we need to make sure that we pull away and talk with one of our camp directors about what just happened. The very basic way that we can sweep away the stress is to share that care with somebody else. I call this share the care. Share the care. <laughs> you remember the story of the, the four friends who broke a hole open in the roof and they lowered their friend down to Jesus. And I, 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 I remember the story well because it was four friends, right? It wasn't one friend. If one friend had tried to lower him down to Jesus, he probably would have fallen in with him. <laughs> it's too heavy. But four friends can share the load and the burden becomes less. And so we want to make sure that each time during the camp, we're sweeping away that layer of stress that comes upon us. And then at the end of the camp, during uh, that first day, we meet together as a team. And once again, we share what has happened during that day. We share the experiences that we had. And we share the care amongst the entire team. And then this happens every day. Every day, we continue to share the care. And then finally, at the end of the camp, then we meet together and we do a, a, a exercise that I call three, two, one, drop it and go home. Three, two, one, drop it and go home. So let's take a look at this. Extremely important. If you go home and you have not done a drop it exercise, then you are carrying that stress back to your family, back to your home. And that stress will stay with you and it will cause damage. So we want to be careful that everyone who works on an op safe camp has an opportunity to do a drop it exercise before they go home. Please do not wait until after you get back. Before you go home, before everyone disperses, please do a drop it exercise. So each volunteer must have an opportunity to process before returning to their normal environment. We do this in three steps. <coughs> then we also want to give them a chance to make a plan for reintegrating. So when they're away or in the camp with the children, they experience lots of things, but each of our volunteers has a normal life to go back to. They have their own children. They have their wife, their husband. They have their parents to take care of. They have a job to go back to. And so we want to, instead of just taking them from disaster back to normal, to give them an opportunity to make a smooth transition in between. We do this in two parts. And then finally, we want to give them a, an opportunity to think about ongoing care. How do you care for the normal stress that is ongoing in your life? How do you care for yourself? Unless you care for yourself, it's very difficult to care for other people. Now, many of our volunteers, many of our uh, people who've served at Operation Safe Camps actually are caring for people 
all the time. They're caring for people in their church. They're caring for people in their workplace. They're caring for children. Uh, many of them are social workers. Many of them are dealing uh, with uh, children in their communities already. And so we don't want to just address the disaster stress, but the stress that comes normally in their everyday life. So drop it. Three, two, one, drop it and go home. The first thing we want to look at is three. Three is care workers need to have an opportunity to process before returning to their normal environment. We don't want to wait until they get home and are dispersed, but before they leave the campsite, we want to give them an opportunity to do three steps towards this. Number one, in a circle, sit together and ask them to share what was your role? What was your duty? And what happened? What was your role? What was your duty? What happened? For example, I was the craft station leader. And uh, in my craft station, uh, we had to help the children uh, do this thing during the day. And uh, what happened? Well, we ran out of cups. And we had 120 children, but we only had 100 cups. And we had to improvise, and we had to have some of the children share, and it was hard. Okay. Number two, how they reacted. Significant experiences, images, smells, physical and emotional reactions, thoughts, and feelings. And so then they share. Well, I was frustrated because we didn't have enough cups. And one of the children started to cry. And we were trying to comfort that child, and I was frustrated, and I got angry, and, but then my sister came over and helped me. And that made all the difference. Number three, how the worker feels about it now. And so, how do you feel now? I was so happy that my sister came over and helped me out. And that was a blessing from God. Or, you know, I'm worried about tomorrow. If we get this many kids coming back again, is it going to work? It's very practical stuff. It's not some huge traumatic thing. It's not some terrible story. But to give them a chance to talk through their part. What happened? How do you feel about it now? What did you learn? What can we learn together? This is the three part. What happened today? Or what happened this week? Two. Three, two, one, drop it and go home. So the two is we're thinking about going home. And we want to, again, talk around the circle, maybe pair them up into twos, and have them share with each other what do you need to do when you get back home? What's waiting for you? What's going to happen at your job? How about your kids? And you shift the focus away from what we just did and you move it to what's coming next. And so they have a chance to understand, oh, that's right, yeah, <laughs> I need to get ready for that presentation at work. Oh, yeah, that's right, my kid needs this tomorrow when they go back to school. Because oftentimes we'll forget and we'll drop things at home and that creates more stress. The second part of this is we think about what is hard and what was positive. What didn't work? What did work? What was frightening or scary? And what was enjoyable about what we just did together? And the idea is to prepare them so that they can go back into their life without having a bunch of unresolved issues about what happened in the disaster response. And then finally, one. Three, two, one, drop it and go home. The last part we want to talk about 
the need for follow-up, ongoing self-care, and support. And during this time, many of our volunteers who are involved in caring for people, involved in ministry, will realize, hey, I need support. I need help. I need to have somebody come alongside me. And so we want to help them to start to make a plan for that to happen. Ah, I need to take a rest. I need to maybe go and get some classes and, and get more training in this area. I, I need to make sure that I've got someone who I can share with regularly and I'm not all by myself. If we can go through this religiously, if we can be disciplined to make sure that every day during the camp and then before the volunteers go home, we have this session with them, then we can confidently send them back home and know that they're safe and that they'll be ready to volunteer again when the next disaster happens. Thank you very much. I'm Jonathan Wilson, the founder of OpSafe International.